Check in connection. Ah, ooh, there we go. Now it's working. Now I see myself. Could you guys see, like, was it working or is my phone just a hunk of shit? I don't know. I would like to know. Hello. Hi, everyone. We're back. I'm going to add Jer. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Part two. Yeah. Take two. Take two. I kind of hurt because I'm real sunburned. Um, uh, For everyone who's just tuning in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coming to you live. Um, quarantine. How, how are you? Like, how is quarantine. quarantine life for you? You know, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. And I think we're all kind of having good days and bad days. Mm hmm I'm eating a lot of things. Yes. What's your go-to snack during quarantine? I know you got the popcorn machine. You know, there? I got, so I ordered a commercial popcorn machine <laughs> because why not, you know? Because, just because. Just because, period. Mm -hmm. um, go-to snack. Yesterday, I ordered a dozen of Krispy Kreme glazed donuts. Ah, now, let me tell okay. you about this original glazed donuts that I ordered. Postmates ain't shit because normally mm -hmm. they're like what ten dollars for a yeah. dozen. They're charging like twenty seven bucks because they know I will do it, and, and did. I did it, and I might do it again this week. Like it still hit; it was still good. Mm. So that mm. was yesterday. A dozen of donuts. Mm. Um, I mean, it's all willy nilly. I've done Sour Patch Kids, popcorn. That's, that's a good book. I've been making Shirley Temples. Ooh. It's like, I'm getting creative at this point. It's like, my grandma sent me recipes of like pies and cakes. What? Like, okay. what is nutrition? I don't know. What is, we don't know who that is. Greens? Like, yeah, I don't know. What are you eating? Everything. <laughs> I mean, at this point, like, I mean, I might eat this water bottle after I drink it. Yeah, yeah. Um, this pillow. I mean, Drew's kind of starting to look like a snack. <laughs> always a snack. Drew's always a snack. Always. He's a snack and a snack. He's a snack attack. Snack pack. Exactly. Wow, snack pack. a lot of words. Um, no, I, I really like, I think I intended, like, at the beginning of this, I was like, I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. Yes. Use this quarantine to my advantage. Yes. By the end of this, I'm going to be, like, the rock. No, mm, that's mm -hmm. bad. I want to be, like, I want to be, like, Zach Efron of Baywatch. And oh, yeah. then, um, Prime Zach. Yeah, yeah like the real deal zach and uh yeah. it didn't happen it didn't happen i've been eating a lot of you pizza. know we talk about john and Vinny's. yes john and Vinny's. shout out to john and Vinny's. Mm -hmm. and yeah. they, know, they know what they're doing they, awesome. they got it john it's Vinny's. a science over there john and Vinny's. yeah there was but, also what joe's pizza was that joe's, joe's pizza yep joe's pizza Put me on to that mm -hmm. check um what else have i had oh that chinese place that little joint i was telling you about oh yeah formosa you gotta get on we've that. Got, we've got we've got levels to the madness. Options. The Options. thing about it is like this is can, this can be a good thing and a bad thing, but I think mm -hmm. you still have time. You know, you have time to yes. do a full three sixty. You know, um, I've got space. You got you got space. Yes, you do. In my pants, like literal waist space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to lose some. <laughs> Ooh. Um, all right, let's see if these people can guess what the snack that I eat the most is. Mm. Yeah, someone said Hollywood Watch Party tonight. It's happening. It is. I'm going to be there. You'll be there? I'm, I'm going to be live tweeting. Ooh. I'm going to be creeping. Fun. I already Pretty watched fresh. it, but I'll watch it again. You know how it works. Watch it again. Three, four. Three, four. We can hang. Quarantine yeah. hangs. Yeah. Can we'll you do a little, say little, little hi, hi, Ella? Cheeses. People are guessing. They know you mess with cheeses. It's wild. It's wild. And milk. You drink milk? Okay, so that's, that's Nick. <laughs> so Nick plays Barry in the show, and Nick yeah, has yeah. a... Uh, infatuation with milk um it's how he gets into character it's how he creates barry um very very strange process he plays the uh, got milk theme song in his trailer before he starts um but it works by process you know and, yes yeah it does it works um, okay i have a picture i want to show you and i want to show the world real quick. Show and tell. So this is a, a pre-quarantine adventure that jared and i had um 
and it's really funny. And I just, I want to bring it out. Uh, you want to leak it? Go ahead and leak it. What is this? It's going to be a leak. Um, which one do I want? All right, let's stay. <laughs> Johnny Rockets. We went to the Johnny of Rockets. And, Wait, uh, that was actually a pretty epic day, I want to say. Yeah. I think I hit you up and was like, do you want to go to Dave & Buster's? And you were like, I'm on my way. Yeah. We went to Dave & Buster's. Well, but first yeah. we got... We first we got Auntie Auntie Anne's. First of all, let's get this straight. Yep. I grew up saying Auntie Annie's. Auntie Annie's. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Totally Aunt wrong. Anne's? Aunt Anne's. Who is it's that? a hot debate. It's a hot debate. Who is she? I don't know. Never met Every her. Every time we went to the mall, Florida Mall, Millennium Mall, mm -hmm. you know, it was you get there, you go get your Auntie Annie's. Cinnamon mm -hmm. sugar. That's just yep. what the or if you're feeling salt, like original just salt. Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get the cup. But mm -hmm. I realized recently it's Aunt Anne's. It hurts. It like, hurts. I feel oh betrayed. God. I feel lied to. I don't know, Anne. I don't. Know. Know. I, don't know. I thought Annie. my auntie was Annie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But anyways, so, we got Auntie Annie's. We went to Dave and Buster's. I almost ran through a glass door. You almost ran through a glass door. You Jeremy did. Saved my life. saved your life. Yep. We played air hockey. Mm -hmm. We balled out. We did. And then it was like Johnny Rockets. And that right photo. There. Yeah. That woman. Oh, yeah. She was like, <laughs> doesn't work at Johnny <laughs> I was like, can I take your photo? And of course, I'm like, yeah, let's get it. Mm -hmm. And then she starts asking for money. Yeah. We're like, huh? Oh, well, no, we, we just, I don't know. We didn't. Yes. Oh, black and white. Wanted. We're wanted. Wanted. So then we switched up the pose. Oh, she took a couple. I remember yeah. that. It was kind of like a photo session right quick. And then photo number three. We didn't give her money. She nope. walked away disappointed, but then she came back and was like, I'm just going to throw them away anyways. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, I'm going home. So yeah. here you go. Congratulations. So Shout out to her. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I was going to say, shout, shout out to her. Memories last <laughs> always. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good one. Uh, wanted, to, wanted to do a coming to you first, uh, Johnny Rockets Live. Yeah. Um, all right, so I want to ask you a little bit about the show because I, as you know, because I FaceTimed you crying, I loved it. I'm not going to leak anything. I'm not going to spoil anything. But I think it's such an important show because there's so many different messages within the message of what you guys are telling, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I think um, diving into that is such an important thing to have. And a lot of people that follow me in particular, and hopefully people that are you know tuning into the show as well, have had a lot of questions about the work and about the job and how you kind of go about doing what you do and yeah. what is your process and things like that. But I think one thing that I want to ask that I'll just like throw right off the top um, was what was the process? Like, how are you approached for this? Like, how did this yeah. all come about? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's crazy. It's not even a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get so many auditions and, you know, right. kind of making self tapes going in. And mm -hmm. um, I got this project or this email for this project, Untitled Ryan Murphy Project. Um, I knew who Ryan Murphy was, you know, had mm -hmm. some friends that have worked on his shows, right. but there wasn't a lot of information about this specific project. It just said mm -hmm. kind of an old Hollywood themed show. Right. Um, it was like the character Archie, um, an aspiring screenwriter. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, all right. And again, the sides that they gave us and sides are most times they'll send you, you know, um, lines from the show. People don't know what sides right. are. They'll send you lines or a scene from a show and they ask you to prepare. Mm. So, most times it's from the actual show that you're doing so you can kind of get a gist of what the character is right anyways there was no script so i was just sent these sides that had nothing to do with our show that we created and they were like invest in this character and make a good self tape um, yeah well i guess i did all right and it was like the next day i got a call and ryan murphy wanted to offer me this project again we still did not know what it was right um, but long story short me and ryan murphy met we talked about this revisionist history um, idea that he had create, you know, kind of re rewriting the wrongs for these people, mm -hmm. these underdogs. And I just, I was really, you know, instantly inspired and wanted to be a part of it um, yeah. without even reading the script. I think mm -hmm. Ryan Murphy is such a visionary and, you know, has such a staple for an aesthetic. Yes. Um, but it, it felt like, you know, when you're, when you're reading projects and, you know, you just want to do stuff that says stuff or that, that means something to you or that you can connect to. And I really felt connected to this character, to Archie, to right. Hollywood, to mm -hmm. wanting to be a part of the industry. You know, I feel like, you know, we are yeah. in that boat now. You know, we're yeah. like 
just on the on the come up of it all and you know so i just thought it was really cool and inspiring and you know then the journey kind of began yeah were you intimidated at all when you got the information about archie and kind of his character arc in the direction that it was going to go yeah. um because you know it does start out archie is obviously a sex worker, sex worker. So <laughs> how how is how was that something that you took and then crafted that into what obviously we now see on screen yeah well one thing i loved about us talking about the sex work was it wasn't looked down upon right. and one thing about archie is he is very confident he is uh, bold he's daring he 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 is not ashamed of anything he has to do right. and he's not ashamed of who he is and what he does mm -hmm. to to get the things that he needs um mm -hmm. i was nervous because i know ryan murphy goes there i was yeah. like you know the first thing one of my first questions was like how much nudity because right. i know there's yeah, nudity yeah. in most mm -hmm. of ryan murphy's project but it's like sure. how much that mm -hmm. felt like the most vulnerable thing that i could do sure. um and you know what is my what are my parents going to think and my mom and all of yeah. that and he was very protective and mm -hmm. it was very collaborative um and again i i just trusted him we had that initial conversation he told me what he wanted to do with the show i i felt and i heard his heart and how passionate he was about it yeah so you just kind of trust you know you just trust that the journey is going to be what it is and you'll be taken care of mm -hmm. um and that's exactly what it was I, you know. yeah yeah it was interesting to watch from and i mean obviously we've talked so much through the process of you working and then watching the show kind of pre-release a little bit yeah. um and how although that was a major focal point of the character there was this almost like unrelenting realization that this wasn't the be all ends all for archie and that it was it, it never at any point was he defined by his work at that stage yeah. so it's really cool that obviously you and ryan have that type of relationship to where you can curate something together yeah. and creatively collaborate on something that is is pushing story versus defining story Absolutely. And allowing yourself as a character to not be defined in in a moment versus the entire arc of the show which is really really cool to see um and then obviously i always want to talk way deeper into the season but like it's only been out for a couple of days so i'm gonna leave it at that i'm gonna leave it at that leave it at that leave it at that let's see there's some more that i wanted to ask you about the show what was it like collaborating with ryan and i know obviously you worked with janet yeah. as well and i'm janet Fangirl, love Janet. Janet, Mom, Janet Mom, if you don't know her, Google her. She's 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 we had a good time at a what what Golden what Globes. Golden, Golden Globes. Globes yeah. You had a boot. You were wearing mm -hmm. a boot. I wore a boot to the Golden Globes after party. This is before was... any of our shows had come out. So yep, we're just kind of oh, yeah, just kind of hanging great. out. Um, no, Ryan is great. I mean, he obviously created Hollywood. He mm -hmm. directed episode one, um, mm -hmm. so he was very hands on. He's he's king of aesthetic. He knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. um, he's a visionary in that aspect. So it was great, and you know, got I got to work with Darren Chris, mm -hmm. um, David Corns. I mean, the cast is just so great, and it's. I think you can, you know, understand this. Like, it's nothing like just finding that good group of people that are there to like right. make the work good, and also like you can have a good time off off camera as well. Right. You know, I felt that love just hanging out with you know a few of your cast members. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like good times and such a good vibe, mm -hmm. and it makes you excited to go to work. And yeah, you know, and then I think on top of that, when you know you're doing something or breaking the mold or you know, f I think for a lot of us, like at least for me, it was mm -hmm. my first opportunity at a TV show. It was my first my yeah. TV debut. So I just felt mm -hmm. embraced and loved, and it was like a really, really good time. I was never intimidated. Ryan never intimidated me. Some people ask me that, like, were you nervous? And I was like, I, yeah. I, I was never scared. But no, he just, he was all love. It was all like, yeah. it was like a good vibe. We all wanted it to be, you know, a really special project. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like articulate that and create that narrative and share that with the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really cool. And for those that don't know, obviously Jeremy comes from a, a theater background. He spent yeah. a lot of time in New York, two-time Tony Nam, just to, you know, Ooh. brag a little bit about about the boy. Thanks, um, so, yeah, just, just you know, you know, plug in a little bit. You gotta do, little. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> little. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there it uh, is. Plug it in. Um, no, I think it was it's it's really cool to see not only the fact that you came from the background that you did, but also going kind of back to that Ryan being um, the, you know, so aesthetically pleasing. I think sometimes, especially in TV, right, when we try to do these um, these time pieces where you're going back to a specific 
time in history, it can sometimes feel falsified, right? Yeah. And with what you guys did, it was so spot on. Like, I, I'm such a cinema nerd, you know this. Like, I look yes. through the yeah, stupidest yeah. of details when it comes to this stuff. I couldn't find anything that I was like, mm, that's probably a modern thing, or oh, that that's something that you would maybe see in today's day and age. Like, it was done all the way down to even the characters and the character development, the movements, the the nuances in the characters. It was so beautiful to see a, a timepiece done in a way that one is is fictional right like yeah, that's sure. the most important thing that we have to absolutely touch on is that you guys did a timepiece that was fictional that almost felt like a documentary in the sense mm -hmm. that everything was so authentic and organic in the ways that it was to the point to where you you sort of lose touch with reality yeah and i think ryan has done a really good job of that on all of the shows whether it be you know the american crimes or the american horror stories yeah, or yeah. you know whatever have you but this for me was one of those rare moments where i was like oh my gosh like i'm fangirling so hard because it's your show um and you're getting to work with incredible you know talented people across the board um like you were you were saying some of the cast but not only that like it's great to work with people but to have a world around you that is so grounded in a reality that you lose track of it being a fictional series is yeah. so cool and i was so so happy for you to have that um i know, mean truly really, i'm so grateful for you i'm so grateful for your support and mm -hmm. you know it's I, I mean really it just blows my mind that we're having this conversation because it's, it's like, really weird to know the journey that we've both been on and the self tape yeah. that we've sent each other like mm -hmm. hey is this good hey, this should I this? Like, can you just be honest <laughs> am i trash <laughs> question mark <laughs> should i quit should yeah I just, will i ever work today? or no you know what mm -hmm. i mean and just no. like to have this moment and I, I remember you telling me about um when you booked the show and that kind of happened so quick for you because next thing yeah. I know you were like not in LA anymore. Yeah. Sorry, someone called. And um, to now just, I remember like playing your show mm -hmm. and it's like, you're narrating the whole thing. Yeah. First I'm of like, all, I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with the cast. You guys are like, you guys are it. Um, even in the first episode, in the first like, in the first four minutes of your show, I immediately, mm -hmm really know who each yeah. of your characters are and who you play in each other's lives and i love that i feel like you. you're already invested you guys are in this abandoned house you're being so reckless mm -hmm. and then i was just on the on the ride for the show and i just thought that was so cool obviously i will support you in everything you do mm -hmm. um and it's just been amazing to watch stop crying it's been amazing to just watch people like fall in love with you your heart your past because Thank it's authentic you. and it's genuine and you guys want to do good work and mean good mm -hmm. um and that's just really inspiring and you know so cool you like want good people to win you know so i'm yeah. so happy for you it still blows my mind that we both have our shows out and they're like you dropped yours and yeah. you dropped mine and it, yeah it makes no sense i mean we've, we've kind of talked about this a little bit but to do it in the fashion that it's being done right now and then to give a temporary relief to this like crazy pandemic that we're going through yeah um and to do it in the ways that it's been done, it's just, it's almost like, you know, you kind of just look up and you're like, is this, like, when is Ashton Kutcher going to come out and punk? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, gotcha. like it just, yeah, like, wow. no, honestly, <laughs> um, it's crazy. It's, it's almost through my phone at that. I know, yeah. 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 A joke taken too far. Yeah. Um, no, it is. It's insane. It's like, I don't really use Facebook like that. I, I mm -hmm. only go on to see what my mom says and right. mm -hmm. what her friends are saying. You're like, but where just, are the I went on recently <laughs> and it was just like all of our high school friends and mm -hmm. people just so proud. Like, yeah. honestly, that, that means the world, you know, it's just, and for yeah. me to be on this journey, not alone. I mean, yeah. you have your cast, but it's like nothing like having someone who knows you, who's like, absolutely, with yeah. you in the cafeteria. Yeah, like, that's some real shit right there, you know, so it really so, is. It's, it's, cool. it's, it's bizarre, too, because, you know, you hear about people, obviously, in the industry who come out of, you know, great institutions, whether it's colleges or yeah. like these private art high schools that are high, highly focused on the arts, whether it's, yeah. you know, TV and film or theater or even going and looking at schools like USC and UNCW, where they like focus, hyper focus on directing and, and camera operating and stuff like that. Yeah. But we went to a public high school. Yeah, there was. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's not like we had some astounding theater program or television program yeah, that we yeah. were immersing ourselves in in the craft. It was yeah. 
this weird, um, like crazy reality that this is just, and this is kind of like a little bit of the motivational side. It was just like, there was a dream and there was a consistency that you and I had at a young age. And we knew that it was not going to be a sprint and it was probably going to be a marathon. And we stayed in touch as we both went to opposite coasts. Yeah. And here we are, you know, at this point in our lives doing something that both of us are incredibly super blessed to be doing but beyond the blessed part of it it's a lot of super hard work yeah and a lot of no's and a lot of you know falling down and getting back up i mean just to kind of touch on it jeremy and i you know did a like a small web series oh, together yeah, web series that two years ago because we were just like let's let's we try were just, to yeah it's and, like yeah and i think that's like i realized that a couple of years ago it's like all about the community of people you have yeah because you know? you'll mm-hmm. you'll have the ups and downs you'll have the great successes and you right know, but you like you said there is a lot of no's and mm-hmm. you know working in this business and i remember like you would be sending me these <clears throat> incredible tapes and you would be getting mm-hmm. so close to these jobs and i would be yeah. like what is the disconnect like and i have so mm-hmm. many friends like this but you specifically is like I mean, am I crazy? Because the work yeah. is there and it's consistent. Mm-hmm. I would see tapes for different projects and right. your range was just incredible. Mm-hmm. But then we were like, okay, I've got a little extra money. Let's like, I was like, can you yeah. come to New York? Let's yeah. film this web series. Right. Like, I remember at one point I'm like doing a scene. You're like holding the mic. <laughs> I'm literally the- like this. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, but it was, right. <laughs> some of the most fun I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Just running yeah. around the city for what four or five days? Four or five days. Mm-hmm. We like wrote this script and like yeah. me, you know, in a couple couple of weeks, and mm-hmm. you were so gracious and free around to come yeah. and hang and do it, and mm-hmm. you know, it, it it was cool and it was great, and I don't know, I'm so glad we had that experience. Um, yeah, you know, to work to work together. I hope that we get to work together. Yeah. Some more, some more, some more. I think it'll happen. I mean, I think it will. Put it out. Put it out to the Netflix gods. Yeah. Wanna... Anybody listening? Hello. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. There's there's a couple more things uh, I wanted to ask you about your journey in Hollywood. Um, I wanted to ask brain, you. Ask me something while my brain is processing at like a you know dial up speed. Yeah. How does it feel with? You know, it's like your show came out, what, is it three weeks now? Yeah. Well, on the third week? Mm-hmm. Wednesday. Tomorrow is three weeks? Yeah, tomorrow's three weeks. Um, how have you been handling all of the mm. madness of it all? Um, madness and the greatness. I think the madness is, yeah. you know, it's like, once your show comes out, it's like you start promoting it. You want people to yeah. see it. You know, it's like navigating Twitter and Instagram mm-hmm. and TikTok and Snapchat. Yeah. It's like all the things that we were yeah. kind of on. For, yeah, for fun, but now it's like let's really it's get the word out. You're seeing the impact of people mm-hmm. like latching on. They're discovering you. They're showing up on your page, and mm-hmm. you want to tell them like, "Hey, we're on this this great show that's number one." Yeah. OBX, check it out. So, like, how are you mm-hmm. d- dealing mentally with all of it? I think um, most importantly, I've, as you know, like I'm a big advocate for mental health, and I've dealt with anxiety on traumatic levels for some time now. And for me, it's about having time to really every day take a moment and breathe so i'm like heavy in the meditation space right now like i use headspace religiously Um, every day i find 30 minutes to just sit i'll play some music put my phone down walk through kind of my emotions so that i um i feel okay internally because my thing is is like this is a huge platform yeah and i'm super fortunate to have a ton of people who have fallen in love with the work that i've done and now i'm in a position to where I want to connect with all of these people. And if I don't give myself the time of day to come and and sort of level out, then I'm not going to give them some authenticity. And it kind of goes back to the work, right? Like if you're not at peace with yourself or if you're not taking time to really hone in on your conscious on the day that you're working, you're going to feel something off. So on a daily basis, I just know for me, there's certain things that I have to do. So it's meditation bare minimum 10 minutes yeah, after yeah. i meditate i usually make a cup of coffee i'll sit around and then i'll start playing music i'll just kind of put on a playlist of whatever is on my mind at that time and i'll take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes and i'll just allow my emotions to kind of come 
whether it's crying. I mean, I saw somebody earlier joking about me crying for the second time on live in a week. Yes, yes, I'm an emotional guy sometimes, okay? Sue me. Sometimes, Sue me. sometimes I get yeah. I yeah, yeah. Sometimes I get water in my eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think with that, it's, it's sort of like, um, it's such a beautiful problem to have. You know, I think as an artist, right? I was talking about this with, with Drew last night. You look at people like Van Gogh, who spent his entire life shit broke making beautiful work and then after he passes he finally gets the validation mm -hmm. from the world that he's so so much wanted right mm -hmm. so we're in a rare circumstance especially for you and i to be leading shows on the world's largest provider of content and to have people not just enjoy the show but really really dig it right yeah. like I've seen the feedback from Hollywood. Like I crept on Twitter last night, you know, and I was looking at people and they're like, dude, I really connect with these characters across the board. Right. Yeah. And the same kind of goes with Outer Banks. Like Absolutely. you guys have done such a great job and I can justifiably say this for us on Outer Banks too. Like every character is so nuanced. Yeah. Every character has their motive. Every character has their distinct personality traits and it makes it so easy to connect with each individual person, whether you like them or not. Yeah, and yeah. so when you have all of those kind of all of these things present right and you know that you have something that's beautiful and powerful and moving on different levels um i just want to make sure that i'm taking care of myself first absolutely and taking the time every day to do that so that i don't give something half-assed to the world yeah because i think you and i we talked last night literally mm -hmm. we we're talking about intent yeah. and intention and to intention. put out to the world and if you have the right intention the right things come to you yeah. And if my intention is off in the morning or if I, if I start my day on a foot that is not true to what my intention, which is being present for me yeah, first yeah. and foremost, then I can't give anything to the universe. And I don't want to do any of that. Like there's days, granted, as we know, you're going to be at 70%. But I want to be able to give 100% of that 70%, yeah. no matter what that is. So I think those, those are some of the things for me that I really like I have to do. Like, yeah. I know for a fact, if I don't do it, it, I'm not doing that. What about you? Yeah, like, I mean, I think you hit it. It's all about, like, finding that balance of, mm -hmm. you know, just taking care of yourself. And that goes across, like, just right now in this weird and strange mm -hmm. time. You know, I found mm -hmm. it, like, check in on people. It's like a yeah. reminder how easy it is to, like, mm -hmm. text someone or FaceTime them or call them or just be like, you Absolutely. good. Because, like, yeah. I have good days. I have bad days. I think what helps me low key is the fact that I know everyone's kind of chilling. It's not mm -hmm. like one of those days where it's like, I'm the one that can't get out of bed and everyone's like right. hustling and bustling. It's like we're all exactly. trying, to, you know, trying to figure out how we navigate in this space. But with mm -hmm. this, you know, the show coming out and wanting, like you said, to be present, it's just about balance and taking mm -hmm. time for yourself. I've done mm -hmm. the same thing of, you know, it's like the meditation, but it's also just like sitting with yourself, feeling what you feel when you feel it and know that it's okay. Right. Absolutely. You know, I think at the beginning, it's like I've wanted to connect with all of the support and fans and mm -hmm. people that are sending me messages. And it's like I would get overwhelmed because I'm like, I want I don't want any one person to not feel like I didn't see or hear them right. because I feel like that I know that is so important. And I remember yes. those moments when someone recognized me or heard what I was saying or just mm -hmm. even if it was a heart or a like or something, it was like it meant the world. So, right. Like you said, that balance of like taking the time to like, I'm gonna deep dive, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna try to connect with as many of you as I can. And then also like not over exhausting myself and burning out, you know, so right. it's a balance. But I, I think I'm doing better, doing good, yeah. um, you know, and it's, it's all exciting, it's all a blessing. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's about the work and I'm so happy mm -hmm. that people can just all over the world go to Netflix and watch some really, really special work that we like pour yeah. our heart um, mm -hmm. and so much time into and it, it takes a yeah. village it's like yes it's the front line yes it's your main cast but the, it's mm -hmm. the crew it's the hair it's the makeup it's yep. the, the stunt del you know it's like it's mm -hmm. the stunt. it's just it's so many people yeah. that go into making you know these these projects and you know mm -hmm. making them seamless and flawless and enjoyable for our viewers yeah. so Absolutely. it's really like a celebration and i'm kind of glad that i'm sitting down or i'm home to just like yeah. enjoy my first and our first you know what i mean like yep. We absolutely. only debut yeah. once and it'll mm -hmm. never feel the same. And while absolutely. we didn't get the big premieres and all the things, mm -hmm. it's still cool to just be able to engage with each other and with the fans right. all over the world. And, yeah. like, you know, just celebrate this, like, really cool project that we were so mm -hmm. fortunate to work on. For both I think it's super cool. I mean, you kind of touched on it just a second ago, but, like, 
premieres and, and the glitz and glam of kind of what Hollywood presents to you when you get these opportunities is, yeah. is great. But I think at its core, the ultimate thing is about the connection, right? Yes. The connection to the audience, the connection to our castmates, the connection to our cast and crew, right? And now we're sitting in a place to where, in particular, you and I are able to sit down instead of being on a press tour, like... <laughs> Perfect example. You know what I mean? You're like, hey, I'm yeah, on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll hit you back in 20 yeah. minutes. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. You know, versus like being, you know, across the country somewhere in New York doing, you know, 15 interviews for a couple of days. Like I'm able to, be, you know, reach out to you and know that like you're actually present and you're yeah, enjoying yeah. the moment. And really, I think, like you're saying, it's a blessing in disguise to be stuck at home because yeah. now we're forced to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Yes. We're, we're, for, we're forced to actually engage in you know the realization of what is happening in our lives i think sometimes you get so bogged down with having to sort of go in so many different directions during this time period that you kind of don't get to actually see the reaction as it's happening yes and i'm so glad for you obviously you know you're what you came out friday so it's day four for you right now yeah yeah so to be on day four like this is the week where things start to change you know like you kind of get that first weekend push but then like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of that first saying, week. Like, yeah, you're going to be watching the world dive into the show. And obviously, I've kind of been, you know, creeping through the comments a little bit. And it's like, it's really cool to see that the navigation of the platform with Netflix is, yeah. you know, forcing people to watch something. And you sent me a picture of both of our faces next to each other today, which was adorable. I know, um, crazy. But like, to have that, you know what I mean? To have yeah. that ability to sit down and actually watch people connect with what you've done and yeah, not yeah. only connect with what you've done but to be incredibly proud of your work and the and the people that you've worked with from yes. you know darren to david to janet to ryan to i mean you patty lapone like so many people. patty lapone rob reiner i mean like there's there's so many people who you got to to play pretend with for a living you know yeah and so i just hope that you know for us both like if anything for people that are watching and are going on this journey with us that it's mm-hmm. just like you know, a beacon of light or it can just feel like something tangible and, and inspirational. Yeah. And it's just the fact that like, you know, it, it takes a village, it takes it takes mm-hmm. time. You have to be mm-hmm. willing to to take those no's. But I think we both wanted, you know, yeah. to keep working and wanted to Absolutely. see each other and mm-hmm. we supported each other in it. It's like find your tribe of people that are gonna like yeah. be your fan club for you. Cause you're mm-hmm. gonna have bad days and good days but that are gonna support yes. you. You know, yes. because I think that's what makes this moment beautiful. Yes, I'm so happy it's reaching everyone and it's, you know, but it's like, mm-hmm. I have you. I have yeah. such a, a friend. I have, mm-hmm. and it means like be on this journey together and to be able to like celebrate yeah. this win for us both mm-hmm. in the same family, Netflix family. Yeah. It's it's a dream, you know? So I just, yeah. it's like, really don't is. give up. Please don't give up. God, mm-hmm. it's like, if you think like we could have easily given up a year and a half ago when we were sending each other tapes and they just weren't hitting. Mm-hmm. Um, but those jobs weren't for us and these jobs yeah. were, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So it's just so cool. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. I can't wait to hang. I feel like we should do a hike or something. Please. We can stay yeah. six feet apart. We can, yes. like, we can, we can practice social distancing. Distance. We can like, or something, you know what I mean? I think at this mm-hmm. point, we're still staying home. We're still being safe. We're washing our yes. hands. Mm-hmm. But it would be cool to just kind of like turn the phones off and just like go see some nature right quick. Absolutely. We'll make it happen. Yeah. I agree. I'm super proud of you. I'm super, super pumped that the show has been a smash. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your work. Um, and the fact that, you know, you didn't give up. You know, I think making that jump from what you did is, is kind of the scariest thing that I can ever imagine. You know, like we've talked about my wants to, you know, scare the shit out of myself and do theater. And it's still kind of a fear, but a want. Yeah, and I'm going to get you to do it. You're going to do oh, it. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. It's, it's happening. happening. Um, but for you to you know, to do this, this transition and do it at the capacity that you did and not just do it, but excel at it has been the most heartwarming thing. Cause like you said, it's not that you just want your friends to succeed. It's like, you want them to fly you want them to soar and to watch you do it two weeks after I've been on a euphoric high of, of meeting all these people and, you know, having them watch my show and then have those people transition into going and watching your show has been like the most, epic thing you know like i've seen people yeah. messages being like i didn't know you guys knew each other like i know the means- obx fam the obx fam is like unreal like mm-hmm. they are so real like i've gotten messages from people that are like so it's- happy for you and chase like the support mm-hmm. is so real and it like means the world man. It's so, so yeah. cool. i'm just glad yeah. that we can celebrate this for each other 
and we're going to keep on keeping on. We're going to keep on doing the damn thing. Well, let's hang soon. Yes, please safely. do. Safely. We will hang yes. safely. Safely. Uh, Bring a mask. Bring your gloves. Watch out for airplanes. Watch out. You hear that? It's LA. Uh-oh. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to hang. Of course. Of course. Thanks for and doing thank this. Thank you, guys. I mean, we didn't. Yeah. I mean, this is great. This is thrilling. Yeah. Do you want to answer, like, five questions? Yeah, let's see questions. Okay. okay. The people that are on here. Okay. Do that. You're, you're in control. Um, I, don't, I don't know how to work this. I got controls. Um. Uh, um. How are you experiencing quarantine? Are you able to see friends and family? Uh, I'm hanging. A lot of FaceTime, a lot of calls. Yeah. My grandma texts me pretty much every morning mm -hmm. to say, "Hope you are well. God loves you." Which we mm -hmm. we love that. Thank you, grandma. Yes. Um, she's not on IG Live, so she won't see this. Oh. But that's how we're doing. Screenshot and send it to her. Yeah. Um, I think the same. A lot of FaceTime, a lot of Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my first mm -hmm. birthday party Zoom hey. like, a couple weeks ago for one of my cousins, so that was cool. Okay. Um, but yeah, just a lot of like staying low key and not really doing everything it. is like high key, low key. <laughs> I know, right? Like, how can we do the most, but like the lowest of keys? Mm, all of the keys, but the all lowest and the most. The lowest. Um, uh, oh, here's just a random question that's fun. Yes. You have to shave off all your hair or shave your eyebrows off. Mm. This is ironic because Maddie just posted a video today of her shaving her eyebrows. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I have some questions. I should text her. I have some yeah, you should, you, should, you should be like, are you okay? Yeah. Is everything all right? <laughs> um, what is your answer? You go first on this one. I would shave my head. Shave your head? I feel, yeah. I feel like I would look like an alien if I shave my eyebrows. So <laughs> although aliens are cool and I'm, I'm a big fan, I don't want to be one. You yeah. Know? So I think I'll shave my head. Yeah, yeah, I probably do the same. I remember one time I went to this barber and like, he was like, yo, let me shape up your eyebrows or something. And mm -hmm. I was like, all right, whatever. And he did. And I feel like I looked crazy. I did. I don't feel like I know that I looked crazy. Like, um, confirmed. And it took, I don't know, maybe 16 years for them to grow back. So, and I know my, my hair grows fast. So I mm -hmm. would shave my head. All yeah, day. my hair grows really fast, actually. Yeah, it does. Oh. It's insane. All right, two more. Let's see. Let's see what I can find. Watch out. Um, da -da 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 -da. Ooh. Let's just do, what are, what are some albums that you're listening to right now? Favorite album or two of all time? Yo. That's a tough question. That's let's, just, let's just say, what, what are some albums to? that you're currently listening to? Okay. Right now, I am listening to Real Talk. So my my first like artist that was like a huge crush. Well, it was Celine Dion because Celine Dion is everything. But the girl mm -hmm. I thought I was going to marry, marry was JoJo. Get Ooh, leave right now. JoJo is everything to me, and she just put out a new album. I think like May first, Friday, last Friday. Wow. So I've been vibing with that. I've also been into funk, so like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. um, Shaka Khan became revolutionary yeah. again to me last week. I don't Ooh. know. I'm kind of all, all over the place. Like a little Styles. epiphany rediscovery? That. Yeah, a little recent rediscovery. We talked about Harry Styles. That album is fine. Mm -hmm. um, I yes. hate that Like all these artists that just put out these albums can't go on tour. So I feel like now it's time know, for us yeah. to just like, keep playing the song on Spotify. Right, yeah. What about you? Support, what do you think? support the artist. Um, I think right now, I've kind of been all over the place. I mean, I've been listening to, um, let's see. Um, uh, Fleetwood Mac Dreams I think that's an album that just kind of like stays consistent in my my arsenal um, ELO Electric Light Orchestra um, anything that they've done obviously Mr. Blue Sky uh, the Rolling Stones have an album that is called it's one of their recent albums it's kind of interesting it's not like their older kind yeah. of nostalgic movement, move it, mu mu music, it, music, it, music. Um, and then also um, Alabama Shakes, uh, always, Ray Edward, always Ray Alabama Shakes. Yeah, and they have okay. actually an album that I like. Kind of, it's not even like it's an iTunes session, and they just played sort of like a live esque version of some of their big big hits. Yeah, their big hits. That's so dope. And 
it's it's popping. And then weirdly, Anderson Pack, Malibu. Oh, that's another one. A little old school Anderson. Um, so those are kind of my go tos. I love that. And, all right, Uno Mas. Uno. Somebody, saw, somebody saw Alabama Shakes live. Boom. This is a good one. This is a good way to end it. Go ahead. Go ahead. What now. started your career? Okay. Order of events. I had to choose between track, running track in high school, or auditioning for the school musical. Got in the school musical, changed my life, loved the group of people I met, didn't want the experiences to end, so I moved to New York City at 17, mm -hmm. went to a conservatory program for musical theater and theater and acting and learned as much as I could and started working. I think what changed my life was I got my first job off Broadway in a play called Choir Boy, written by Terrell McCraney, who also wrote the movie the Oscar award winning movie Moonlight. And I think from then on it was game changer. Game what about game. you? What started your career? Chase at Chase. Um, uh, when I was also in high school, I didn't do theater. I did television production. And um, I remember I had filled in for an anchor one time when uh, somebody were was you sick. on the morning news. Yeah, it was. You were. Yeah. I remember seeing you every morning on the morning news. Wolf TV, baby. As an anchor, you did an anchor yep. thing. Oh, I, mean, I was, uh, I was very, very <laughs> just unamused, unamused by it. To be completely honest, I was like, "Good morning, good morning, Luke. I remember. Yeah, a little um, dull. A little. Yeah, dull. <laughs> I was usually tired because this. The thing was, is like I was playing hockey competitively at the time. So it was like uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were practice, and then Friday I was on an airplane. Saturday, Sunday were games. I'd fly back Sunday, try to get enough sleep to go to school Monday. So. I was like never really present till about 1030 in the morning at school yeah. because I never slept. And then I did, I don't know if you remember this, but I did this like, which is so ironic because I suck at school, but I did a commercial in high school and it was like a spoof on Harry Potter when I was shocking people with the wands, like make sure you turn in your college applications. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You were pressuring us to do yeah. to college for college, go to, go to college. Exactly, yeah. Oh, and so I was like, that. you bend out. And I was like, yeah, yeah. People with fake wands. So we edited it to seem like it was actually, you know, magic and whatnot. And it kind of became this thing where people were saying I was funny and I was like, I really don't think I'm funny at all. So I appreciate your kind words, but not, yes. not happening. And then my teacher at the time was like, why don't you think about getting into acting? And then um, I did a Disney catalog with the Roonies um, because the youngest Rooney was sick. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I made like 300 bucks and I was like, whoa, this is yeah, a thing. Money here? <laughs> money. Yeah, I was yeah. like, all right, that's a lot of McDonald's. And so um, <gasps> that happened. And then I just kind of started to... I went on IMDb and I started to like learn about the industry and then I got a commercial agent in Orlando, did some really crappy commercials. Um, and then I made enough money to where I was like, okay, I need to get in a class. And I got in a class, and did Meisner and all that fun jazz. And then I was like, okay, I know I need to go to LA. So I literally maxed out a Gmail account and messaged every agent at CAA, UTA, WME, ICM, you name it. Any agency. And I was like, please help me. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, but maybe you can help. And nobody responded except like two people. And um, and that was my agent for the longest time. And that was really where it got started. Yeah. But um, ironically That's enough, cool. I, don't know, I don't know if I've told you this story, but the first job that I ever booked um, was this, this, uh, this series called I'm not even going to say it because it's it's out in the world and it's right. not something I want to talk about. But anyways, the casting director was Lisa Fincannon, and she is a fantastic human being. Um, she's based on the East Coast. And she literally got me my start in the industry, moved to L.A., you know, whatever, whatever, starved, lived in my car, you know, worked whatever jobs I could to make ends meet. Yeah. Full circle moment. She called my agent and told me I needed to audition for the role of John B. Isn't that insane? And she's, she's the reason I have the job. Like, she's the casting director who fought for me. She was the one who made the call, who got me the audition, who, was, who got me to Charleston, who fought for me, you know, until, you know, obviously I did the work and got the job. Yeah. Um, and then it was really cool because in one of the later episodes, and obviously our show's been out for a while, but I can say this because it's, it's cool for the people who have watched the show. When I go to the police station to tell them I know who killed the sheriff, the lady who's at the front desk that's Lisa Fincannon. Um, so and they didn't tell me. Yeah, they didn't tell me till the day. Like, I didn't know she was going to be there until that day. And I was in my trailer and I was just like, yeah. whoa, this is too much. Like, this yeah. is, 
too much of a moment. So that was really cool to kind of have. What was her name again? Lisa Fincannon. Lisa. Shout out to Lisa. Also shout out to that teacher that told you you should get an acting. Because I also had some teachers in high school mm -hmm. that were like, you should do this. You should take this mm -hmm. seriously. And I like, they are the reason. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those people who just yeah. like, speak that positivity and like, just it only takes one person. It only takes one teacher. And I think a lot of That's artists it. that I've talked to have that one specific person that like saw so much potential for them. Right. Like, when we're kind of like, we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Right. And then it, is, you know, it just gives you like a little bit of fire in that gut, and you're like, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. I think the other thing that is back. Is cool. Hi. Back. Um, I see you. You see me? Jeremy. Yeah, I see you. So good. Jeremy and I both were extras on a TV show and it was called oh The Inbetweeners yeah. and it was a very interesting show but the director was this phenomenal director who just got some fantastic news this week which is Taika Waititi. Um, so it's cool that you know the only thing that we were able to do in high school in that time period was this MTV show who happened to be this iconic director who has gone on to do some of the best films of our generation so it's it's kind of a weird weird full circle crazy crazy crazy, crazy. Experience. we're all we're in the we're in the right place if anything it's a reminder that we are in the right place the universe is speaking to us i'm trying to outline to this and to you this has been That'll a dream be. i'm so glad we could do this yes yeah, yeah, everyone for... stayed on yeah, thank you guys for, for hanging with us and listening to us ramble and, and shoot the shit and talk about life, movies, TV, hair, uh, hair. eyebrows, Jesus. Jesus. rockets, crispy cream, rockets, Jesus, D all the above. <laughs> well, let's hang. Right. We're gonna we're gonna well, do a quarantine. I love time. you. Thank you for doing. I love you, bro. I love you so much. Yes, I'm happy you in you. Double days. I, I, you I love you too. I'm proud of you. My heart is super warm. I'm gonna text you. Three seconds. Okay, yeah, so literally, it's not. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs>